Hey guys, it's Crystal Adam Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I am just coming here to say hi to you and to talk a little bit about what's going on with me, how my year has been, maybe some of my thinking going into 2020. But I haven't been here for a couple of weeks because here in the States, we've had Thanksgiving. I had family come down from the Midwest here to Texas. So I've been hosting and eating so much food, the gluttony of it all. Ugh, Lord. So now I'm intermittent fasting and I'm trying to be austere because you can't live in that space of eternal gluttony, but it was fun while it lasted. I've also got a couple of projects going on right now. Um, and so I, I've just been, I've been quite busy, but I did want to check in with you and kind of let you know what I've been noticing about myself. Now for 2019, and, and those of you who have been with me for a while, you probably have picked on, up on the fact that this has been a year for me to resolve my health. And it's funny because for all intents and purposes, and if you were to look at my labs, for the most part, I'm healthy and I'm pretty strong, but vibrationally speaking or energetically speaking, I can notice as the years march on a dip in in my energy, kind of a lack of clarity to my thinking and just not thriving at the level that I know I can thrive and at the level I've thrived before. So really wanting, knowing that there's so much work for me to do and so many things I'm passionate about on this planet. However, I need to be, I, my instrument needs to be capable, <laughs> able to hold the energy that's coming into me, that's being expressed through me for all of this work. If I, if my body's breaking down, if my body's petering out, well, then I'm not going to be able to to light work or to shine my light at the level that I really truly desire to. So 2019 for me is about getting my vessel right. And I've had some missteps, I have to admit. I signed up with a really cool acupuncturist slash Chinese herbalist. I spent some a few months with him and really liked him and just still really love him. But the protocol for me didn't work and it made me uh, hypertensive and it made me feel really weird. This is one of the reasons that it's been kind of hit or miss with me sometimes with uh, actually uploading because there have been days and actual weeks where I've just had a really hard time being collected enough to articulate really anything. And um, so I just, when I feel that way, I just don't. I kind of just stay offline or I sequester myself. And it's been kind of a quiet year because of that. So after a season with that practitioner, I prayed about it and I found another practitioner. I actually see her. I have to leave in about a half an hour to go and see her and hear about all of the testing that I did to see what I need to bring into alignment because I took... When I tell you the testing, Lord, I had the saliva testing. Mm. I had the blood testing. I had the urine testing. I had the fingernails. I had the tongue. Um, I had the fecal testing. I don't want to talk about it. It took me literally a month and a half to even do it because I was so grossed out about that. But I did all the testing. I got it all in. So today I go in to find out what my status is. And I'm going to guess, as an intuitive, that it's toxic. I'm going to guess that I there's some detoxifying, purposeful and intentional detoxifying that I need to do. And then I'm going to hopefully get on a, a supplemental regimen that is tailored to me so that I can start feeling that optimized level of energy that I'm seeking. That is my desire because 2020, we've got some new things happening and I have to be 100% present for that. So as I've been dealing with this stuff in my life, I've also been, of course, looking at the energetic stuff. Because for those of you who don't know, every physical issue that we have has an energetic and a spiritual correlate, meaning there's a connection in the chakra system. There's a connection in the auric bodies. There's a connection in our energy and our emotions as well as in our spirit. 
How many of you have had a hard time in your physical body and you've noticed when my body's falling apart, it's really hard for me to feel very spiritually connected or to feel really sound of mind. All these things, mind, body, spirit, intersect and flow in and out of each other. And so as I've been doing the physical work with my body, I have been noticing the energetic stuff. And for me, it's my thinking. It's always my thinking. And what I have determined in just the last couple of weeks is that I think I have low-key anxiety, which is weird to me because during the day, I'm just like a bright little butterfly. I love people. I'm out here loving on people, just thinking about, I'm creative, I'm optimistic. But when the sun starts to go down, I start to get a little tense. I noticed it last night. My husband, we were watching The Expanse, and when we started watching it, I was feeling great. But by the time we were done, we watched three episodes, I was feeling really tense in my chest. And then I went to bed, and I couldn't sleep. And then I did finally fall asleep, and then I woke up at like three or four, and I couldn't get back to sleep. And this happens a lot. And I've been thinking about it and wondering about it. And I I asked Spirit about it, because of course, if we ask, Spirit will answer. And what... I'm getting and integrating because I know it. But what I'm really integrating is that my anxiety is a habituated pattern. It, I don't think it's a result of something that might be chemically imbalanced in me. I think rather that it is present because I have always been in it and I've rectified a lot of the anxiety, a lot of the stress, a lot of the trauma, but on a cellular level, super deep down, almost like this electric pervasive hum that underpins my whole existence, there is this tension and it shows up at night. Why? Why? I ain't afraid of no ghost. (laughs) I'm not afraid of the dark. Or am I? And what I've come to realize in the last couple of weeks is that when I was a kid, living in my crazy household with my parents who were addicts and my dad who was super violent. At around dusk, I started to worry, like, what's going to happen tonight? Because my dad got drunk in the evening and that's when things popped off. And I just started bracing myself physically and also energetically for what was to come. And I would often be woken up in the middle of the night to banging and screaming and terrible, terrible things. And I would just shake. I would shake in my bed, just listening to all of it. So fearful. And I spent the first 20, 18 years of my life in that space, that energetic space, so much so that I habituated to it, meaning I became used to it. It was my normal. So when I left my parents home at 18 and I married my first husband at 18, I was habitual. I was used to that pattern of chaotic energy. And so once I was out of the environment, I needed a substitute for it. So I created more chaotic energy. And of course that marriage didn't last as a result because I didn't know how to be an adult. I didn't know how to be a conscious, caring, generous person. Now, after I left that marriage, I very quickly got into my second marriage and same thing. Those issues weren't resolved. I thought they were because I was in my 20s. (laughs) When you're in your 20s, you think you know, but you really don't know. Around mid-30s, you start to see, oh, I've been a dummy all these years. I had no idea that I had no idea. I had habituated to this pattern of anxiety and to this pattern of chaos. And I've since resolved a lot of it. And I've done a lot of emotional work. And I say so often that that's what life's about, everybody. It's about doing this work, that soul excavation, really looking at what's living and breathing inside of you, the patterns within the body, which I also call the body within the bodies because they're alive. They have form and they exist inside of you. It's about shining lights into those spaces and bringing anything that's out of alignment with source energy into alignment by virtue of shining the light into the shadow. I've done so much of that work. But guess what? We still have more work because now, even though I don't have to worry about my dad beating my mom, 
Now at this age, I wake up and my brain searches for something to worry about. 10 years ago, it was money. Like, oh my gosh, I'm getting a divorce and how am I going to support myself and my child? And I worried about money all the time. Before I went to bed, I was worried about money. If I woke up at three in the morning, there was this cold dread that would just consume me as I feared all about money. Now, as I resolved those issues and I don't have money problems, thank the Lord, I don't have money problems anymore. I am abundant. I am prosperous. Because I don't have to worry about that, my brain, as soon as I wake up, my brain starts looking for something else to worry about. And for this whole year and for last year as well, it's been my health and wellness. My, my mind starts thinking about all the things that could be wrong that I don't know about. How long does it take for cancer to form? Is cancer inside me now? Or I'll start thinking about other aspects of my health and I'll worry and I'll deeply, I'll deeply fret. Now, since I've become aware of this, and if if you experience this, I want you to be aware of this, this might not actually be because your anxiety and worry might not actually be about anything that's real and present in your life. It may just be your cellular memory, your mind, your ego, and your awareness searching for something to be anxious about because you come from profound anxiety. When in reality, there's nothing to worry about. Life is really good. These days, well, these nights, I've been spending a lot of time in my observer position. The observer position is our higher mind, but it's also fixed to 3D reality. It's not our higher self. It's the mind that we can occupy that is higher than I, but that is still connected to this incarnation. And the observer within us can neutrally observe what you're thinking, what you're doing, the choices that you're making, what your life looks like. And if we can occupy this observer position, which again is neutral, meaning we're not reactive while we're there. If we can look at things intentionally and neutrally, we can make some decisions and those decisions will be helpful to us. So I've been spending a lot of time looking at what I'm thinking about. I wake up at four in the morning. I'm groggy. I want to get back into that dream. And then I realize, uh uh-oh, I'm awake. Because I'm awake, I'm going to have, I'm going to start thinking these thoughts. And so I'll pop out of that worry and I'll just check my brain out. Within a minute or two, it's latched onto the first thing to worry about. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's dying early. Maybe it's, do I have enough life insurance? Does Jeremy have enough life insurance? Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It'll latch onto the first thing. And from the observer position, I'll make a decision intentionally not to worry about that because I don't need to. And I'll release it. And then the awareness starts looking for something else to latch onto because I think I'm still in the stance of little girl in the bed quaking. So for me, what this means is a deeper level of work and patience with myself. And you know, I used to get really frustrated with myself. Why are you thinking these thoughts? You know better. You know how to manifest. You know these thoughts run counter to what it is that you want to manifest. What are you doing? And I would actually judge myself for my little girl stance. Be better. Be stronger. Get over it. Well, guess what? My cells aren't over it. My body's not over it. My heart's not over it. And if you saw me in the middle of the night, you could see that I'm not over it. And so as I do the work in the body, the work in the energy is revealed. And all I can say is I'm open to healing here. I don't, I, I got to tell you, I don't know how to heal that other than to be love, other than to seek ways in my life to align to love and to be joy to the best of my ability because that's light. God is love. Love is light. Like it's all the same thing. If I can align to love and to light and to joy and to happiness and playfulness and laughter, if I can do that more, that's light. I can bring it into my body and see the light knows how to do what the light knows how to do. I don't need to know how to be the light. The light knows how to do that. All I need to do is to be receptive to it and to be intentional about desiring the alignment and the healing. And truly, 
no longer judging me for what has happened to me and what I became as a result of that. Instead, loving me and in the moment that I realize this is an illusion, the fear and the worry, it's an illusion, but it's tied to seven-year-old Crystal in her bed hearing her father beat her mother in the dark. I can just take a beat and time travel a little bit back to that girl and I can get in bed with her and I can hold her and I can hug her and I can tell her it's going to be okay. You don't have to worry anymore. We're okay. We're abundant. We're prosperous. We're healthy. We have a good man. We're secure and we're safe. I'm not going to judge myself anymore for the things that are presenting to me because they want to be healed. Sometimes we get so annoyed and uncomfortable with the things that we don't know how to resolve or our patterns that we can't get out of instead. Instead of being uncomfortable and upset about it, let's learn how to say thank you and say, okay, this is, my, this is the new level of my work. And how can I love this work? And how can, I, how can I be the light in this work? So, y'all, that's what I'm doing. That's what I've been doing. My mind is on my wholeness. My mind is on loving myself and being grateful and glad for who I am right now. And I'm not perfect. I'm not as strong as I could be. I'm not as fast on my feet as I used to be. I'm not a size two like I used to be. Far from it. But I'm so happy for who I am in this moment. And I feel privileged and so grateful that I'm here. And that's what I've been doing with my life. That's what I've been going through. And I wanted to share that with you. This year has been very, it's been very good. It's been quiet in some ways, but in other ways, it's been incredibly transformative. And I've been willing to be uncomfortable. And I've been willing to put myself on a table and have needles all over my body. I have been willing to send messages to my heart, to my joints, to my gut, to my brain, telling all of me that I love me. I've been willing to let the things that still live inside of me, the bodies within the body, bubble up to the surface without denying it or chasing it away and instead embracing it because that spirit finally allowing me to heal it. And I'm here for that. How about you? Until my next video, I hope you know and that you never forget that I got nothing but love for you.